that kind of day and I just watched Obi-Wan Kenobi episode 5, why don't we just finally dive into it? A month ago when I watched the marathon through because I went to a quiz, I couldn't handle the book. But I think now just might be the time. Just might be the time to hurt ourselves a little bit further. You've seen the title, you know what I'm gonna do. We are going to finally complete the trilogy reread. Now I read Labyrinth of Evil a while back, didn't film it. I'm probably gonna read Rise of Darth Vader again too, but that is not the point right now because this is the star of this vlog. I hope not to make it too long and I will only read the really gut-wrenching stuff, but let's just get into it. When I'm emotional, which might seem contradictory, but I know what I'm talking about. When I'm really emotional, I don't really feel like talking. So maybe for this one, we will actually skip the crying parts. Welcome back to my daily chronicles of pain. This is chapter two or three. I didn't check, but like he gets a vision of killing Dooku and then memories flow through his head. For the first time in too many years, he felt young. As young as he really was, young and free and full of light. My heart just keeps clenching every time I read those words because as young as he really was after too many years. At this point, he's a war veteran of like 23 and full of light. I am in pain. I am in so much pain. Do you want to know why Revenge of the Sith is... The best novelization because Matthew Stover somehow made it completely different like even the things that happen exactly the same because this is a novelization it feels like a completely retold story but in the good way where everything happens but the emotions that he describes and the little comments that he adds in between that don't appear in the movie because movies are for action and books are for thoughts, it hurts so much more. Like, it just hurts so much more because you know exactly what's about to happen, but he tells it to you in a way that you maybe didn't expect. A very, very, very cool detail is when Dooku and Sidious are talking before Anakin and Obi-Wan get there. Because in the movie, all you get is them just getting there and then Palpatine in the chair and then they fight Dooku. But here you have the entire perspective from Dooku while he's waiting for them to arrive, which again, so necessary in a way, when you know everything that happens, you like filling in the blanks, but how they're having the conversation about how they intentionally made Anakin seen as the greatest Jedi in the galaxy. This is kind of a lie for Dooku because he will not be imprisoned, he will be killed, but how Dooku is petitioning for Kenobi to be recruited rather than killed. <laughs> and then he calls him almost his grandson. And Palpatine's argument is he is too old, too indoctrinated, irretrievably poisoned by Jedi fables. Which, A, means he definitely thinks Anakin is young enough to be indoctrinated, which is depressing, so, so depressing. Plus... <laughs> He sees that it's an emotional bond both for Anakin and for Dooku. So any way you look at it, even if Kenobi would be useful to him, he just has to die. His death may be the code key of the final lock that will seal Skywalker to us forever. Not only would the death of his mentor tip Skywalker's already unstable emotional balance, down the darkest of slopes, but it would also remove the greatest obstacle to Skywalker's con conversion. As long as Kenobi was alive, Skywalker would never be securely in the camp of the Sith. Kenobi's unshakable faith in the values of the Jedi would keep the Jedi blindfold on Skywalker's eyes and the Jedi shackles on the young man's true power. I I'm in pain because... As much of a catalyst as Ahsoka and Padme were to Anakin, 
Obi-Wan was his truest family and it hurts. <laughs> this entire book is just a very, very sad song about the two of them. That's why I love it so much and that's why Matthew Stover had the audacity. <laughs> This is the stuff that makes a book worth reading. It's a comedy I didn't know I needed. Like, Anakin keeps telling Dooku, like, oh, we've got Sidious by now. He has to be in Jedi custody. And then Dooku is like, is he? Dooku relaxed. He was terribly, terribly tempted to wink at Palpatine. But of course, that would never do. <laughs> I'm just imagining if it were a comedy, Dooku being like, is he now? Is he? <laughs> I can't. It's just so funny to me. Their self-control, their self-control. Also, the comparison of all of their presences in the Force, how Anakin is like a storm, Obi-Wan is like a meadow or something, if I think he said meadow. <laughs> I think he said meadow. In conclusion, and how Palpatine is the event horizon regular, but after the like the boundary complete darkness love the comparisons just matthew stover man matthew stover if you've ever been debating if you want to read a star wars novelization i would start with this one because it proves to you that they are worth reading and that they are actually just masterpieces there's a reason why he hired really good authors to do this just i'm not reading out all the interactions because i'm in physical pain when i do but but for Anakin, in the fight there is only terror and rage. Only he stands between death and the two men he loves best in all the world. And he can no longer afford to hold anything back. I hate admitting it because I hate his guts even though he's probably the best written villain of all time. But the fact that Palpatine is actually his... As a Sith, the fact that his tactic is to actually not, not, not at first, you know what I mean, not manipulate and bully Anakin into becoming a Sith, but to actually become one of the two men in his life that he loves most. He's like his uncle, as Obi-Wan said in Labyrinth of Evil. If I am something of, of a father to Anakin, then Palpatine Palpatine is the uncle. The fact that these two are literally his family and complete opposites hurts so much. And the fact that it didn't even come down to who he trusts more, but one of them believes in something that would stop Anakin from getting the help he needs for Padme, and the other offered to help Padme. It wasn't even Jedi, Sith, or Obi-Wan, or Sidious. It was literally, okay, there's this third person that I love, my literal wife and child. Which one of you will help me save her? And only one offers, and he feels like he can only tell one because the other one is part of a, part of an order that would never allow it to happen, and it hurts. It hurts like a bitch especially because Obi-Wan supported them all along and knew all along and actually talked to Padme and let it all happen because he saw how much it mattered to Anakin and it hurts, it hurts. This is where Palpatine's weakness is because when he tells him, leave him Anakin, there's no time because he's trying to break him free from Obi-Wan, then we'll all be adrift together. Anakin glanced up at the Supreme Chancellor and for that instant, he didn't like the man at all. But then he reminded himself that as brave as Palpatine was, his was the courage of conviction. The man was no soldier. He had no way of truly comprehending what he was asking Anakin to do. Such a thin line that Palpatine is threading because if he pushes it just a little bit, he is going to just shove Anakin over the edge because... He, the same way that Obi-Wan knows what he's asking when he asks Anakin to spy on Palpatine, Palpatine has to know what suggesting that Anakin leave Obi-Wan would be like. So he is very clever to have stopped. <laughs> Some more very interesting details. How he keeps like riling him to go kill Grievous too. Anakin jerked, startled. He turned a sharp, gr sharp glance toward Palpatine. The way he had said that, 
like a voice out of his dreams. I am in so much pain that I don't even feel hurt anymore at this point. <laughs> That's not what Obi-Wan keeps telling me. Forget Obi-Wan, Palpatine says. And how he keeps thinking about it. But then Obi-Wan shifted on his shoulder, moaning faintly, and Anakin snapped back to reality. No, sorry, Chancellor. My orders are clear. There is a rescue mission. Your safety is my only priority. Literally, Obi-Wan waking up is enough for Anakin to be like, you know what? Fuck the dark side. So it's no wonder, no wonder, that Palpatine, like, I think all of his efforts <laughs> went into trying to kill Obi-Wan. He was like, okay, Dooku didn't did it. That's great. Now, I can't get rid of him while <laughs> we're on Coruscant, but let's try and send him off to where Grievous can kill him. God damn it, he made it. <laughs> and now he's cut down my new Padawan. Obi-Wan seems to be the bane of Palpatine's existence. <laughs> he killed Maul. He trained someone who killed Dooku. And he couldn't convert Anakin until Obi-Wan looked like his enemy. This is... This is getting so funny, but also so heartbreaking because Palpatine is so desperate. He is so desperate to get Anakin to let go of Obi-Wan that he's going to realize he can't do it. He can't force Anakin to let go of Obi-Wan so long as he's alive. Because <laughs> he's Palpatine, who we very much know is the most powerful person in the galaxy. Which raises another question that I've always wondered. Palpatine has to be very sure that when he's pretending to be in mortal peril, that the people can actually save him. Because if Anakin drops him, Sidious is not really going to allow himself to die. So he would reveal himself. And then what? Like, you know what I'm trying to say? He has to be very sure that Anakin can save him. Because otherwise he's going to have to reveal himself. Because he's definitely not going to die just to prove that he's not Sidious. But back to the point, how he's trying to force him to drop Obi-Wan, he's getting so desperate. He's like holding Anakin's leg and he's like, Anakin, I'm slipping. Give me your hand. You have to give me your hand and drop Obi-Wan. Not in this millennium. Anakin. <sighs> Don't panic, Anakin repeated. The Chancellor had clearly lost his head. I can get us out of this. No, but how he's like, and not drop Obi-Wan, not, not in this millennium. The, the choice was always clear, I think. The choice was always clear between who he trusted more. Oh, Anakin, he said, with the sort of quiet, pained resignation that would be recognized instantly by any parent exhausted by a trouble-prone child. Where is your lightsaber? <laughs> Apparently in the book he lost his lightsaber down the shaft, but since Grievous has it, I guess Grievous hunted it down. I mean... I'm not sure why that was necessary, but yeah. <laughs> He's like, can we talk about this later? Without your lightsaber, you may not have a later. I don't need a lecture, okay? How many times have we had this talk? Apparently, one time less than we needed to. Anakin sighed. Obi-Wan could still make him feel about nine years old. Palpatine and Kenobi are like his parents. I'm sorry, this just... We never see Sidious laugh genuinely. But this, this weapon is your life, Obi-Wan. He did a credible enough Kenobi impression that Palpatine had to smother a snort. Can you imagine that? Like Palpatine just actually having to suppress a laugh? I love it. Honestly, I think this book, considering that all the novelizations are done after the movie, could be the four-hour cut that George wanted. Like, all the extra stuff with Padme, all the extra scenes, all the conversations. I feel like this really could have been the four-hour cut that we might have got. We need to appreciate this because they're jokes. <laughs> they're like... That's just an excuse. You're the hero. Go spend your glorious day surrounded by Obi-Wan allowed himself a slightly disparaging cough. Politicians. <laughs> I love them. I love them so much. And the whole Shatterpoint thing from Mace's point of view and Palpatine saying this entire war just might be a single play in the larger game. 
this book is just brilliant. We deserved a movie, even if it was like five hours long. Want to know what hurts a little extra? Hurts like a bitch, but when Mace and Obi-Wan are talking about Anakin's relationship with Palpatine, I trust Anakin with my life. I know you do. I only wish we could trust the Chancellor with Anakin's. This entire thing is just forcing me into a depression. Yes, Obi-Wan said, frowning. Palpatine's policies are sometimes questionable, but he dotes on Anakin like a kindly old uncle on his favorite nephew. The Chancellor loves power. If he has any other passion, I have not seen it. Obi-Wan shook his head with a trace of disbelief. I recall that not so long ago you were something of an admirer of his. Things, Mace Windu said grimly, change. After a moment, Obi-Wan said, what would you have me do? I'm not certain you know my power. I cannot always interpret what I've seen. Be alert, be mindful of Anakin, and be careful of Palpatine. Next chapter is called Padme, and I can't already... But the fact that Palpatine keeps saying, you may have noticed that I have a certain gift for getting my way. And when he says, seems like everything went your way after all, Chancellor, he says, things frequently do. So yes, my fellow INTJ, I hate him from the bottom of my heart, but at the same time, yeah, best written villain ever. Descriptions of Padme I am living for because you know I am Padme's number one apologist ever. But though she loves her husband without reservation, love does not blind her to his faults. She is older than he and wise enough to understand him better than he does himself. He is not a perfect man. He is prideful and moody and quick to anger. But these faults only make her love him more, for his every flaw is more than balanced by his greatness within him, his capacity for joy and cleansing laughter. His extraordinary generosity of spirit, his passionate devotion not only to her but also in the service of every living being. He is a wild creature who has come gently to her hand, a vine tiger purring against her cheek. Every softness of his touch, every kind glance or loving word is a small miracle in itself. How could she not be grateful for such gifts? This is why she will not allow their marriage to become public knowledge. Her husband needs to be a Jedi. Saving people is what he was born for. To take that away from him would cripple every good thing in his troubled heart. I, I love her. I love her. And how she is terrified and trembling because she knows that by telling him that she is pregnant, he's not going to be able to be a Jedi anymore. <laughs> My babies. My babies. She will have to face the future. She is terrified. While he has been away, everything has changed. And I did the math. If he's been away for five months, let's say, say that she found out she was pregnant a bit later. So she could be like seven months pregnant, minimum, maximum of eight, because I doubt it would take her like three months to find out. So yeah, she should be very, very visible at this point, very visibly pregnant. <laughs> She is more than now than Anakin Skywalker's wife. She is the mother of Anakin Skywalker's unborn child, Ren. <laughs> so, I, hello. <laughs> I have to and want to know what they would have been like with the kids. And it breaks my heart that we never get to find out. He would have adored Leia. I just know that. And I think Luke would have like just followed in Padme's footsteps and become such a great senator. We deserved to have them on Naboo and like Anakin teaching Leia stuff in the fields, teaching her the force, Luke studying for his exams with Padme and the houses. 
near the lake country. <laughs> I'm just depressed. <laughs> One thing that I adore is the banter. There's no banter in the movie. There was no time for it. But between Anakin and Padme, they have such a cool relationship. Because he's like, forced me out of the order. Was that a pun, Padme? And then she gets angry because he's not serious. And she's like, you worry too much. You don't worry enough. They have such a precious dynamic. <laughs> And now she's like, <laughs> this is Coruscant, Annie, not Tatooine. Women don't die in childbirth on Coruscant. I'm in perfect health. Your dream must have been some kind of metaphor or something. I My dreams are literal, Padme. I wouldn't know a metaphor if it bit me. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> like, I love him. He's not an idiot. He's more of a cutely stupid simp <laughs> sometimes he adores his wife and he's literally like what kind of metaphor do you think i would dream about padme i don't know what a metaphor is <laughs> i love their relationship so much and it's such a welcome addition to this because it adds so much to them as people i am in love with every single interaction that they have him and obi-wan are something very special but him and obi-wan are very explored in the movies him and Padme are something, unfortunately, very poorly explained in the movies. So not a lot of people like their relationship or Padme in general. But I, I've i grown to love her so much through the Clone Wars and through all the books. Padme is probably my favorite female character who isn't a Jedi. Probably my favorite female character in general. I don't know how to explain it. Ahsoka is up there, but she's a kid. So if we're looking at like genuinely just female characters who are women, Padme has to be, has to be number one. Can we talk about the heartbreaking reality that he says Obi-Wan would help him? He knew Obi-Wan would help him. He just had to figure out a way to ask. And this is where we get the detail of the true heartbreak of his decision. He didn't just want to be a master for the hell of it. He wanted to be a master because they had access to the holocrons, which would actually provide him with the knowledge he needed to save Padme, or so he thought, because Padme was obviously never in danger. She was in danger of him and of Palpatine. But he literally just wanted to go in and see the holocrons, and he couldn't explain to them why he wanted the holocrons. And just think, if he'd told them that he that his wife is pregnant and that he would leave the order but if they would just allow him to see the holocrons so he could save her a lot could actually have been prevented and and it just hurts it hurts so much so far i've not been that sad because stuff has sort of been very interesting and not heartbreaking yet but the little hints of pain <laughs> are just seeping in more and more with every chapter so Let's hope for the best. I'm not sure if I'll finish this today because I can't handle that much at, at one point, but we'll see. Sidious's seduction is so much more developed here because he's genuinely talking about Sidious like it's this random person. He is a master, a master. I love him so much. There has never been a more of a hate to love relationship with me and a character because I love his character so much just like I loved him in Plagueis but I hate his guts <laughs> because he's like it's, uh, it's I'm sorry it's just so funny how he says like if this Darth Sidious of yours were to walk through that door right now and I could somehow stop you from killing him do you know what I would do I would ask him to sit down and I would ask him if he has any power he could use to end this war and if he said he did I'd bloody well offer him a brandy and talk it out <laughs> Sidious. Sidious Palpatine, sir. Uh, as an INTJ, you've mastered living inside your head and pretending to be other people. Like, I bow to you. Here's finally the proof for everyone who's a little bitch complaining about how Anakin just wants to be master. He was about to become the youngest master in the 25,000 year history of the Jedi, but none of that really mattered. Palpatine has somehow seen into his secret heart, 
and had chosen to offer him the one thing he most desired in all the galaxy. He didn't care about the council, not really. That was a childish dream. He didn't need the council, he didn't need recognition, and he didn't need respect. All he needed was the rank itself. All that mattered was mastery. All that mattered was Padme. This was a gift beyond gifts. As a master, he could access those forbidden holocrons in the restricted vault. He could find a way to save her from his dream. Kill me right now. Just kill me right now. Because this buries 100% his stupid arc that he has in the fandom of really wanting to be master. I know it's a joke, but not a good one. <laughs> this is even worse, and this is why the Jedi had to fall this entire conversation where he's telling them he is extremely loyal. We can't ask him to spy off on a friend. That is why we must call upon a friend to ask him. You don't understand. Don't make, don't make him choose between me and Palpatine. Why not? Asked Plo Koon. Do you fear you would lose such a contest? You don't know him. You don't know how much Palpatine's friendship has meant to him over the years. You're asking him to use that friendship as a weapon to stab his friend in the back. Don't you understand what this will cost him, even if Palpatine is entirely innocent, especially if he's innocent? Their relationship will never be the same. Obi-Wan was, I believe, the only one who could have truly saved Anakin, and he wasn't there when Anakin need needed him. So all that Anakin had was his own will to believe that Padme won't die, even though the man before him, Palpatine, was offering to save her. Since Obi-Wan wasn't there, Anakin had no hope. He genuinely had no hope. Maybe if Obi-Wan got back sooner, but we know that that's exactly the problem, and that's why Palpatine won, because he struck at precisely the right moment to hurt them both. I think Obi-Wan could have been the only one to actually bring back Anakin because he was the only one who truly understood Anakin as a person, as a man, and as a Jedi. The Ma Matthew Stover's comments, like the banter, are so funny. Just so funny because like when they insult him by not, by not letting him use the privileges of Master, which, which is literally all that he wanted. <laughs> it's like, this is an insult to me. This will not be tolerated. Take your seat, young Skywalker. Perhaps I'll take yours. <laughs> you think you can stop me from saving my love? You think you can make me watch her die? Go ahead and vapa this, you. <laughs> I love him. I just love him. Like the go ahead and vapa this, you. God knows what he would have wanted to say, but Anakin, Obi Wan said softly. He gestured to an empty seat beside him. Please. And something in Obi Wan's gentle voice, in his simple, straightforward request sent his anger slinking off ashamed, and Anakin found himself alone in the carpet in the middle of the Jedi Council, blinking. He suddenly felt very young and very foolish. Forgive me, masters. His bow of contrition couldn't hide bow, couldn't hide the blaze of embarrassment that climbed his cheeks. The fact that Obi-Wan's one word can just calm him down. There's one other thing that I didn't want to comment on, but I have to. Anakin felt a dull shock when the Council assigned the task of coordinating the search to Obi-Wan alone. On top of everything else, now they were splitting up the team. I might as well just kill myself, because since he lost Ahsoka, Obi-Wan's been all he has. Obi-Wan's been all he has for months, for half a year tragedy. This man can write a tragedy better than anyone else in the world. I can already tell that this is an hour long video, but I have the power of any five masters, any ten, you know it and so do they. Power alone is no credit to you. Anakin flung an arm back toward the council. They're the ones who call me the chosen one. Chosen for what? To be a dupe in some slimy political game? Obi-Wan winced as if he'd been stung. Didn't I warn you, Anakin? I told you of the tension between the council and the chancellor. I was very clear. Why didn't you listen? You walked right into it. He warned him against both of them because he doesn't agree with the council either. He is Qui-Gon's Padawan. Like that rape shield trap, Anakin snorted. Should I blame this on the dark side too? However, it happened. You are in a delicate situation. What situation? Who cares about me? I'm no master. I'm just a kid, right? 
Is that what it's about? Is Master Windu turning everyone against me because until I came along, he was the youngest Jedi ever named to the Council? No one cares about that. Sure they don't. Let me tell you something a smart old man said to me not so long ago. Age is no measure of wisdom. If it were, Yoda would be 20 times as wise as you are. This has nothing to do with Master Yoda. That's right. It has to do with me. It has to do with them all being against me. They always have been. Most of them didn't even want me to be a Jedi. And if they'd won out, where would they be right now? Who would have done the things I've done? Who would have saved Naboo? Who would have saved Kamido? Who would have killed Dooku and rescued the Chancellor? Who would have come for you and Alpha after Ventress? Yes, Anakin, yes. Of course. No one questions your accomplishments. It's your relationship to Palpatine that is the problem, and it is a very serious problem. Anakin, stop. Listen to yourself. Your thoughts are of jealousy and pride. These are dark thoughts, Anakin. Dangerous thoughts. In these dark times, you are for cursed, focused on yourself and you need to focus on your service. Your outburst in the council was an eloquent argument against granting you mastery. How can you be a Jedi master when you have not mastered yourself? In a much lower, calmer, quieter tone, he said, what do I have to do? Obi-Wan frowned. I'm sorry. They want something from me, don't they? That's what this is really about. That's what it's been about from the beginning. They won't give me my rank until they give them what they want. He was so tired. It hurt to talk. It hurt to stand there. He was sick of the whole business. Why couldn't it just be over? Tell me what they want. Obi-Wan's eyes shifted and the sick fatigue in Anakin's guts turned darker. How bad did it have to be to make Obi-Wan unable to look him in the eye? Anakin, I'm on your side, Obi-Wan said softly. He looked tired too. He looked as tired and sick as Anakin felt. I never wanted to put you in this situation. What situation? Still, Obi-Wan hesitated. Anakin said, look, whatever it is, it's not getting any better while you're standing here working up the nerve to tell me. Come on, Obi-Wan, let's have it. Their banter really reminds me of Clone Wars. There was just no time for all of this in the Lorenzo the Sith movie. There was too much to do. God, I wish there would have been a five-hour version. I would have loved every second. Obi-Wan glanced around the empty hall as if he wanted to make sure they were still alone. Anakin had a feeling it was just an excuse to avoid facing him when he spoke. The council approved your appointment because Palpatine trusts you. They want you to report on all his dealings. You're trying to make me keep secrets from Palpatine. You want me to make you want to make me lie to him. That's what this is really about. It isn't, Obi-Wan insisted, looking wounded. It's all it's about keeping an eye on who he deals with and who deals with him. He's my friend, Obi-Wan. Yes, Obi-Wan said softly, sadly. I know. If he asked me to spy on you, do you think I would do it? Obi-Wan. It was Obi-Wan's turn to turn silent. <laughs> I'm just gonna start. Just kill myself immediately. The Jedi are your family. No. No, the Jedi are your family. The only one you've ever known. But I'm not like you. I had a mother who loved me, and a wife who loves me, he thought, and a soon a child who will love me too. Do you remember my mother? Do you remember what happened to her? Because he didn't let me go save her, he finished silently. And the same will happen to Padme, and the same will happen to our child. Within him, the dragon's cold whisper, true to his strength, all things die, Anakin Skywalker, even stars burn out. Has to be my favorite quote. Matthew Stover is the balance between funny and poetic and just heart-wrenching. I'm not supposed to be telling you this. You're not, you can't tell this to anyone, you understand? I can keep a secret, all right.
located within the furnace of his heart. Anakin whispered an echo, not quite an echo, slightly altered, just at the end. I would ask him to sit down, and I would ask him if he has any power he could use to save Padme. Mm. I can already tell that this is going to be an hour long, but that's, that's all right. <laughs> you think Skywalker won't be able to handle this, Mace Windu said. I thought you had more confidence in his abilities. I trust him with my life, Obi-Wan said simply, and that is precisely the problem. For Anakin, Obi-Wan said at length, there is nothing more important than friendship. He is the most loyal man I, I have ever met. Loyal beyond reason, in fact. Despite all I have tried to teach him about sacrifices that are at the heart of being a Jedi, he, he will never, I think, truly understand. He looked over at Yoda. Master Yoda, you and I have been close since I was a boy, an infant. Yet if ending this war one week sooner, one day sooner, were to require that I sacrifice your life, you know I would. As you should, Yoda said, as I would yours, young Obi-Wan. Any Jedi would any other, in the case, in the cause of peace. Any Jedi, Obi-Wan said, except Anakin. Obi-Wan guessed they were remembering the times Anakin had violated orders. The times he had put at risk entire operations, the lives of thousands, the control of whole planetary systems to save a friend. More than once, in fact, to save Obi-Wan. I think... That abstractions like peace don't mean much to him. He's loyal to people, not to principles. And he expects lo loyalty in return. He will stop at nothing to save me, for example, because he thinks I would do the same for him. Because, he admitted reluctantly. Mason Yoda gazed at him steadily, and Obi-Wan had to lower his head. Because, he admitted reluctantly, he knows I would do the same for him. You fear that perform this task, he cannot. No, that's not it at all. I'm firmly convinced that Anakin can do anything, except betray a friend. What we have done to him today. But that is what Jedi are, Mace Windu said. That is what we have pledged ourselves to. Selfless service. Obi-Wan turned to stare once more towards the assault ship that would carry Yoda and the clones to Kashyyyk, and he could only see Anakin's face. If he asked me to spy on you, do you think I would do it? Yes, he said slowly. That's why I don't think he will ever trust us again. He found his eyes turning un unaccountably hot, and his vision swam, swam with unshed tears, and I'm not entirely sure he should. All right. All right. They got me. I'm at the halfway point, and they got me. I'm going to read till Obi-Wan leaves for Utapout, but they got me. <laughs> it's been an hour in your time, but they got me. This is probably my favorite interaction because he's like, how are you feeling? Her smile was radiant as Tatooine's primary as she took his flesh and pressed it to the soft fullness of her belly. He keeps kicking. He, Anakin asked mildly. I thought you'd ordered your medical droid not to spoil the surprise. Oh, I didn't get this from the MD. It's my, her smile went shy. Motherly intuition. He felt a sudden pulse against his palm and laughed. Motherly intuition, huh? With a kick that hard? Definitely a girl. <laughs> the fact that neither of them are wrong... I mean, to be fair, I'd kind of order my droid to tell me if I'm having more than one child, regardless of gender. But the fact that they are both correct, <laughs> with a kick that hard, definitely a girl, says the man who literally grew up with powerful women, single mother, Ahsoka, his wife is a badass. <laughs> and now the scene that was deleted and then we, we deserved to see when Obi-Wan comes to talk to Padme right before he leaves. I was very happy to learn of his appointment to the Jedi Council. Yes, it is perhaps less than he deserves, though I'm afraid it may be more than he can handle. Something is wrong, isn't it? Obi-Wan tilted his head and a hint of a rueful smile showed through his beard. You should have been a Jedi. She managed a light laugh. And you should never go into politics. You're not very good at hiding your feelings. 
what is it? I'm probably gonna read out loud this entire thing to you, but... <laughs> We had words yesterday and we parted badly. I've been a bit worried about him. I was hoping he may have talked to you. Why would he talk to me about Jedi business? Senator Padme, please. He gazed into her eyes with nothing on his face but compassion and fatigued anxiety. I am not blind, Padme, though I have tried to be for Anakin's sake and for yours. What do you mean? Neither of you is very good at hiding feelings, either. Obi-Wan. Anakin has loved you since the day you met, in that horrible junk shop on Tatooine. He's never even tried to hide it, though we do not speak of it. We pretend that I don't know, and I was happy to, because it made him happy. You made him happy. Nothing else ever truly could. He sighed, his brows drawing together. And you, Padme, skilled as you are in the Senate floor, cannot hide the light that comes to your eyes when anyone so much as mentions his name. I, I can't, Obi-Wan. Don't make me talk about this. I don't mean to hurt you, Padme, not even to make you uncomfortable. I'm not here to interrogate you. I have no interest in the details of your relationship. Then why are you here? Anakin is under a great deal of pressure. He carries tremendous responsibilities for a man so young. When I was his age, I still had some years to go with Padawan. He is changing quickly, and I have some anxiety about what he is changing into. It would be a very great mistake for he to leave the Jedi Order. Why, that seems unlikely, doesn't it? What about his prophecy the Jedi put so much faith in? Isn't he the Chosen One? Very probably, but I have scanned this prophecy. It says only that a Chosen One will be born and bring balance to the Force. Nowhere does it say he has to be Jedi. My master, Qui-Gon Jinn, believed that it was the will of the Force that Anakin should be trained as a Jedi. And we all have a certain, oh, I suppose you could call it a Jedi-centric bias. <laughs> it is a Jedi prophecy, after all. I fear that some of this current difficulty has to do with your relationship. If you only knew how much she thought. What do you want me to do? I cannot tell you what to do, Padme. I can only ask you to consider Anakin's best interests. And you know the two of you can never be together while he remains in the Order. Very well. Remember the Jedi are his family. The Order gives his life structure. Gives him direction and you know how indisciplined he can be. If his true path leads leads him away from the Jedi, so be it. But please, for both of your sakes, tread carefully. Be sure some decisions can never be reversed. Padme, he said softly, almost regretfully, gently. I will not tell the council of this, any of it. I'm very sorry to burden you with this, and I, I hope I haven't upset you too much. We have all been friends for so long, and I hope we always will be. Thank you, Obi-Wan, she said faintly. She couldn't look at him. From the corner of her eye, she saw him incline his head respectfully and turned to her own. I'm gonna kill myself. For a moment she said nothing, but as his footsteps receded, she said, Obi-Wan, she heard him stop. You love him too, don't you? When he didn't answer, she turned to look. He stood motionless, frowning, in the middle of the expanse of buff carpeting. You do. You love him. He lowered his head. He looked very alone. Please do what you can to help him, he said, and left. <laughs> Such deep pain. <laughs> comes from reading this book such deep deep emotional pain because of how inevitable this is because of how much obi-wan knows he has to go and how much he knows what will happen if he goes because he literally came to padme despite knowing what it might cause and he's like please take care of him because when i leave i won't be able to but Padme can't take care of him because all Anakin is doing is taking care of her. I'm just going to read when him and Anakin say goodbye and then I'm leaving for the night. 
just the love they all have for each other as friends and as family because one Jedi then, at least one, there is one Jedi, one whom I know all of us can trust absolutely. Her voice trailed off into a pulled silence when she realized she wasn't talking about Anakin. This had all been about him when she started, all about her love, her need to be open with him, the pain about keeping the secret. But when she thought... When the thought had turned to trust, when it became a question of someone she knew, truly and absolutely knew she could trust, she discovered that she was talking about Obi-Wan. But none of that is romantic in the sense that Anakin thought it was. They're all just really, really, really good friends. And honestly, who wouldn't trust Obi-Wan? I would trust Obi-Wan with my life if I were there. He's truly the best Jedi left as Qui-Gon's Padawan. He is his legacy. And it really shows. It really shows that he's the master among them. And it makes complete sense that even Padme knows she can trust him. Love or Anakin or not, I love him too. He is horribly torn and horribly, horribly pulled in all directions. Crying for the second time. But let's just ignore this and go through the emotions together because this is the point. How he's like, he doesn't need to go. He has all the power he needs. So no, it wasn't that he wanted to go. It was more inexplicably that he wanted Obi-Wan to stay. There was a cold void in his chest that he was afraid would soon fill with regret and grief. Because he knows he has that power of premonition he knows he too knows subconsciously what will happen when obi-wan leaves that's why obi-wan went around town begging padme to help him they all know what will happen if obi-wan leaves of course there, there was no chance at all that obi-wan wouldn't go he'd lead the last jedi in the galaxy to the fine order now for the first time anakin found himself wishing that obi-wan would be a little more like the late qui-gon Though he'd known Qui-Gon for mere days, Anakin could almost see him right now, brow furrowing as he gently inclined his head over his shorter Padawan. He could almost hear his gentle baritone instructing Obi-Wan to be mindful of the currents of the living force. To do one's duty is not always to do right. Concern yourself with right action, let duty take care of itself. But he couldn't say that, though he'd passed his trials many months ago. To Obi-Wan, he was still the learner, not the master. All he could say was, I have a bad feeling about this. Obi-Wan was frowning as he watched a clone deck crew load his blue and white starfighter onto the assault flight deck. I'm sorry, Anakin, did you say something? You're going to need me on this one, Master. And he could feel an unexpected truth. If he were to go, he could somehow bring himself to forget Padme. If he could somehow get himself away from Palpatine and the Council and his meditations and politics and everything on Coruscant. If he could just tag along and play the Kenobi and Skywalker game, everything might still be all right. If only... <laughs> I'm sorry. I hate doing this. I no longer like crying on camera. Like, it was <laughs> bad enough when I was reading Memory of Light, but it's painful. It's painful because he feels that if he just removes himself from Palpatine and just goes with Obi-Wan, He'll be fine. If he stops worrying about Padme, he'll be fine and she wouldn't die. I don't like you going off without me like this. It's a bad idea to split up the team. I mean, look what happened last time. You want to go spend another few months with someone like Ventress or worse, Anakin? Anakin can hear gentle voice smile in his voice. <laughs> don't worry. I have enough clones to take three systems the size of you to fall. I believe I should be able to handle the situation, even without your help. Anakin had to answer his smile. Well, there's always a first time. This is so much worse than the movie. In the movie, they exchange like three lines. This is so much worse. As books always are. We know this. We're on book two. We're not really splitting up, Anakin. We've worked on our own many times. Like when you took Padme to Naboo while I went to Camino and Genosis. Years later, here we all are, still alive and still friends. My point, Anakin, is that even when we work separately, we work together. We have the same goals, end the world war, and save the Republic from the Sith. As long as we're on the same side, everything will come out well in the end. I'm certain of it. Well, I suppose you could be right. 
You are once in a while, occasionally. Obi-Wan chuckled and clapped him on the shoulder. Farewell, old friend. Master, wait. Anakin turned to face him fully. He couldn't just stand here and let him walk away. Not now. He had to say something. He had the sinking feeling he might not get another chance. <laughs> it's that subconscious premonition that he has that hurts like a bitch. <laughs> Master, I know I've disappointed you in these past few days. I have been arrogant. I've not been appreciative of your training and of your friendship. I offer no excuse. My frustration, frustration with the council. I know that none of it is your fault and I apologize for all of it. Your, your friendship means everything to me. He gripped Anakin's mechanical hand and with his other he squeezed Anakin's arm above the joining of flesh and metal. You're wise and strong, Anakin. You're a credit to the Jedi Order and you have far surpassed my humble efforts at instruction. <laughs> Just the other day you were saying that my power is no credit to me. I'm not speaking of your power, Anakin, but of your heart. The greatness in you is a greatness of spirit. This is not getting easier. <laughs> Courage and generosity, compassion and commitment. These are your virtues, Obi-Wan said gently. You have done great things and I'm very proud of you. Anakin found he had nothing to say. Well, Obi-Wan looked down, <laughs> chuckling, releasing Anakin's hand and arm. I believe I hear General Grievous calling my name. Goodbye, old friend. May the force be with you. All Anakin could offer in return was a reflexive echo. May the force be with you. He stood still and silent and watched Obi-Wan walk away. Then he turned and slowly, head hanging, moved towards his Peter. The Chancellor was waiting. <laughs> And that, my dear friends, is where we will stop <laughs> because, because I can't handle this right now. Maybe tomorrow, when I'm out of this mood, <laughs> I can handle the ending. Not all at once because I have the feeling that I would be crying for hours. So we're done for the day. <laughs> I hope you had fun somewhat. I didn't. This is more a diary of my misery than anything else. But it hurts. It hurts. So I hope it's at least entertaining. I'll see. You. Yes. So it's officially been a year since I, <laughs> since I read this book. But not that it matters to you because the vlog all comes out at the same time. Anyway, here's the thing. I stopped right around the point, as you know, where Obi-Wan and Anakin say their last goodbye. And around that time, I was finishing The Clone Wars. And then I immediately afterwards watched... Revenge of the Sith. Now, if you've never done that, watching Revenge of the Sith right after Clone Wars, it's devastating. Like, it's even worse. It's heart-wrenching, and I could not look at this book. I could not look at this book for a solid year. So here we are, hopefully for, for the last time, because I just watched Clone Wars again. I'm not going to watch Revenge of the Sith, but we're going to read Revenge of the Sith, and probably have the same effect so let's finish it let's read the worst part of book three of the star wars novelizations and hopefully i i will finish this trilogy because i love it so much it's just very heartbreaking the heartbreaking thing is that anakin is hating all of this literally hating it <laughs> why did everyone always have to make their problems into his problems why couldn't people just let him be how is he supposed to deal with all this when padme could die like he couldn't care less about the council politics he couldn't even care less about palpatine like in the movie it seems like he's somewhat sympathetic but he could not care less about palpatine he's like can you please leave me alone i literally just want to save my wife and leave to naboo to be a house husband with my children this just makes it so much worse that he doesn't want to do any of this. As I said, this is where we get into the issues. He is a mess. He is literally a mess. He's freaking crying in Padme's apartment because he can't believe he ever suspected her or Obi-Wan. Arguably two of the closest people to him since Ahsoka left. And he's just a mess. He's literally a mess. This is, this is upsetting. This is upsetting. When we get to the descriptions about his fight with Obi-Wan, I might actually be a wreck, so you might not see a lot of me later. Genuinely, one of my favorite tropes of all time 
is knowing the future and trying to prevent it is actually how you cause it. Like it happens in a lot of my favorite books, a lot of my favorite movies here, for example, where he dreams about Padme dying and by trying to avoid it, he will essentially be the cause of it. I just love the tragedy, but also kind of the comforting fact, I guess, that you can't avoid fate like if you know what's gonna happen and try and avoid it you're probably actually gonna like dive headfirst into that fate and i just kind of love that that's probably the only way that i like reading about like seeing the future that's the only way that i can stand seeing the future that you tragically end up causing it because i just love <laughs> I just love the tragedy of that trope because like you know what's gonna happen and you can't let it happen but by trying to resist it it's actually gonna happen i don't know why i like it i don't know all of us like a touch of tragedy sometimes i guess this is mine i love how essentially he's pulled in three directions and the one that wins is going to be the one that actually pulls him away you have padme with her agendas you have palpatine with his agendas and you have the jedi council with their own agendas all of them are pulling in their direction obviously padme is gonna win when she is his wife obi-wan's like a close second but padme is gonna win and palpatine knows this like he knows that padme is always gonna win so he's gonna offer him the one thing that no other side will offer him i will help you save her the jedi cannot and would not offer that because he's not supposed to have a wife and padme herself thinks that he just needs to calm down and that she's not gonna die so palpatine is the only side like the weakest side essentially because i think if you put padme obi-wan and palpatine like against each other in his head palpatine would come dead last like no matter what he would come dead last one is his wife the other is like his brother mentor best friend palpatine would lose so the only way that he's gonna pull him to his side is by offering something that no one else can and would offer obviously he's lying but to anakin who's drowning in his grief and fear just that offer was enough to push him towards palpatine it's it's poetic tragedy i i hate it so much and i love it at the same time i <clears throat> Contemplation of death brought only one slight sting of regret and more than a bit of puzzlement until this very moment He had never realized he'd always he'd always expected for no discernible reason that when he died Anakin would be with him <laughs> I'm going to kill myself <laughs> Ma Matthew Stover now I love a lot of the novelizations and just just by the way He's referencing a lot of the other books that came before this. I never realized this because I hadn't read that many but he's referencing a lot of books but that aside like <laughs> matthew stover has a way with words that just physically hurts me and by the way i bought another matthew stover book so that's good because they'd definitely be interesting I'm, I'm always in my star wars era <sighs> but right now i just feel like it's gonna be extra gut-wrenching because i watched the clone wars again what palpatine is offering him is so much scarier than in the film so much scarier he's just i'll give you anything you want an apartment you can have the building corellia i'll take corellia the planet or the system <laughs> what if i want the war to end would tomorrow be too soon <laughs> they shouldn't be laughing because he's essentially baiting him by giving him whatever he wants he wants him to give in to base your instincts but <laughs> i'm sorry seeing Palpatine being like do you want the system i can give you the sector <laughs> like also obviously it's very naive to think that he wouldn't ask for anything in return he's just baiting him but this is so much more sinister than the movie palpatine is the scariest villain of all time and i i do not even want to argue that because he could defeat him immediately like we know palpatine is currently the most powerful force user in the world but he's just using his words He's just using all the seeds that he planted since the age of nine. He's like, what if this is the true face of the Sith? A loyal friend who wants to give you everything you want. He doesn't seek to control you. Like, it's perfect. It's literally perfect. You would technically have no reason to doubt him because he doesn't trust the Jedi right now. And all Palpatine is 
told him, like, as an evil man, is that, like, I can give you exactly what you want and you can be free and go with your wife. Obviously not even get, getting into the fact that he's responsible for the entirety of the war, which Anakin isn't internalizing right now, but it's like he's dangling a bone in front of a very, very desperate and starved dog, and it's it's so cruel and so clever, and I cannot explain how much I love Palpatine as a character. He's terrifying, insanely terrifying, without actually being scary. Obi-Wan is like his dad, like his family. Like Palpatine is cornering him. And he's like, words will not fit themselves into the answers you need. If only Obi-Wan were here, Obi-Wan would know what to say, what to do. Obi-Wan can handle this. Right now, he knew he couldn't. Like, in his moment of panic, all he thinks of is Obi-Wan. Like, if he were here, he'd know what to say. He'd know what to do. I don't. I need him. I need him. I need him. I'm in pain. I am in so much pain. Because... Palpatine is so, so good. Palpatine is so good at what he does. Palpatine's killing him. Killing him. He's not even putting himself in the mix. That's what you must ask yourself, my boy. Whether your loyalty is to the Jedi or to the Republic. Perhaps not. Perhaps it's not simply a question of whether you love Obi-Wan Kenobi more than you love your wife. Thank God Ahsoka didn't exist yet here. Because it would be so bad. It would be so bad, but... It's an awful question. It's like, do you love your wife or your best friend, brother, father, mentor more? Like, he's giving him an impossible choice. The only choice is he thinks Padme's gonna die. And he knows Obi-Wan isn't. Because Obi-Wan isn't, isn't gonna die and he's capable and stuff. He thinks he needs to protect Padme, whereas Obi-Wan doesn't need protection. And it ultimately comes down to Padme just because of that. Because I think that if he had to choose... I do think he would choose Padme, but I also think it's so close that he would never really make the choice if he didn't think Padme could die. I think if there was no vision about Padme dying, he wouldn't choose. And it's, it's just, it's painful. It's physically painful. Sorry about the noise. A Jedi trap works best when one's true goal is merely to make sure that the Jedi in question spends some hours or days off somewhere on the far side of the galaxy, so that he won't be around to interfere with one's real plan, so that by the time he can return, it will already be too late. The fact that Palpatine calculated that Obi-Wan would be the biggest problem. He was like, why didn't they take you with Obi-Wan? I mean, I'm pretty sure it would be better if you went with him to defeat Grievous. He wanted Obi-Wan to go without Anakin because that, in his final moments, Obi-Wan is the one who could still save Anakin. And I think that's so powerful. That's exactly my point. I think Obi-Wan is the one who can save Anakin and not Padme because Obi-Wan actually knows about the Sith. And it's just, it's a hideous, it's a hideous plan that Palpatine concocted, but an effective one. Here it is that Mace Windu loses. If you're a Jedi Master, weighing coldly the risk of facing the Dark Lord of the Sith without the Chosen One, against the risk of facing the Dark Lord of the Sith with the Chosen One eaten alive by fear. He miscalculated. He miscalculated, because if Anakin is... The turning point of the war. He can't just send him to the council. He needs to know what he's afraid of. He needs to sit down, talk to him, and say, what has he offered to you? What do you fear? Like, Anakin, if Anakin had told him, like, all of this could have been solved with Mace Windu's curiosity, but they overcalculated. Like, they thought he was just afraid of the Sith. They didn't even consider what Palpatine offered him. They didn't consider that there's a possibility he could betray them like he just should have said i had dreams of my wife palpatine offered to save her and he should have been like okay we'll deal with that later i promise we will help you just wait and let us go handle palpatine that alone would have fixed it that alone would have fixed everything and anakin wouldn't have even gone 
to say Palpatine because he couldn't care less. Like in his core, all he cares about is Padme and Obi Wan. He could not care less about Palpatine. Like I think his loyalty to Palpatine isn't at all what cinched it. And Palpatine knows that. He knows he will always lose to Padme and Obi Wan, so he had to offer him something. If he just told the Jedi what Palpatine offered him, and they were like, they couldn't even maybe they couldn't even say like they can't help you, but he can't help you either. He's lying. That isn't possible but we will work with you to save your wife like they they lost just because they didn't care to ask what the hell he was scared of i this is where it goes to hell like part three is even called <laughs> apocalypse i think there's like a line all across the jet galaxy jedi began to die and i this is past crying i'm just miserable a single conversation could have stopped this and it's physically painful because the problem is that if it came down to it and he had to like he removed everyone Anakin trusts everyone because if Obi-Wan told him we can't do this Palpatine can't give you what he's offering you but we together we can stop Padme's death Anakin would believe him Palpatine would go to hell <laughs> and fall out the window I mean together they could take him even though he's very powerful but he removed everyone who could actually convince him because if it comes down to it, he will believe him over Mace Windu. Mace Windu never really treated him right. They always treated him with doubt. So unless Obi-Wan, Padme, or Ahsoka told him, we'll help you, don't trust that man, everything would have been fine. But Palpatine calculated it, everything like to a T. He removed every single person who could convince Anakin and hoped that in the moment, what he was offering would overpower everything else. Every reason, every logic... And it did, because Anakin didn't even think that Palpatine isn't a good guy. We know the Sith have been running this war. So in conclusion, he has been putting the galaxy and myself through misery for the last three, three and a half years. That doesn't even cross his mind. It's just like Padme, 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 Padme. And just one person could have been like, Anakin, calm down. This man has caused the suffering of millions. He has enslaved millions. He's put you through hell for the last three years, losing comrades, left and right, losing a Ahsoka. Pull yourself together. We will help Padme, but this man needs to go down. He removed everyone who Anakin would actually listen to because his mind is just flooded by Padme and he wants to use that. He wants to use the one weakness that the Jedi couldn't train out of, out of him and that is attachment and use it against him and kill her in the end to save his life into the monster that he becomes and just you have to admire the evil in Palpatine you have to because he's not just this dude who has a tragic past or something he's just evil evil brilliant I had to move because I do not in fact live alone but it's so much worse the novelizations make everything worse because there's so much more context to everything because you don't have to rush. Other Jedi tried to stop him, like other Jedi. Shakti. She even offered him kind words because she was like, there's no way Mace Windu gave him kind words. And she saw like his dying eyes and how he's losing. And he j <sighs> it's painful. It's actually genuinely painful. And this is where it all goes to hell. When I hear the words Order 66... You can hope that I won't sob because I just watched The Clone Wars. Reading this after The Clone Wars should be like suicide. I might read Rise of the Dark Lord, but that's just going to be even more devastating. In general, if you were wondering whether like the Revenge of the Sith trilogy was worth reading, it really is. Like it really is. You can see what happens right after the war and right, I mean, right after Revenge of the Sith and right before Revenge of the Sith, and Revenge of the Sith itself is a masterpiece because Matthew Stover turned a devastating film into an even more devastating book. Mace's Shatterpoint ability and how he looks at Palpatine's future and notices that his Shatterpoint is Palpatine, but he never checks for Anakin's. Mace had no need to look. The presence in the forest was familiar and was as uplifting as sunlight breaking through a thunderhead. The Chosen One was here. I Mace Windu could have beaten Palpatine because he uses the dark side form. It's pain, it's pain, it's pain because in the crucial moment where Anakin trusts neither of them, one is offering to save his wife and the other isn't even allowing him to have a wife. <laughs> Awful. 
awful and I hate it. When he kills Mace Windu, that's it. That's it. I mean, he doesn't kill him, but you get it. With all my love for the films, they just can't do everything. Because the conversation between him and Mace is longer. Because it's like, you came to arrest him. He has to send trial. A trial would be a joke. He controls the courts. He controls the Senate. So are you going to kill all of them too? He's too dangerous to be left alive. If you could have taken Dooku alive, would you have? That was different. You can explain the difference after he's dead. <laughs> he raised his lightsaber. I need him alive, Skywalker shouted. I need him to save Padme. Mace thought blankly, why, and moved his lightsaber towards the Chancellor. Before he could follow through on the stroke, a sudden arc of blue plasma seared through his wrist and his hand toppled away. The power of Palpatine's hate struck him full on. He had been so intent on Palpatine's shatter point that he'd never thought to look for Anakin's. Dark lightning blasted away his universe. He fell forever. The fact that he even tells him, I need him alive, I need him to save Padme. And he didn't stop to listen. He tried to kill Palpatine anyway, and Anakin stopped him. Like, he even told him, in his final moment, he even told him. He was screaming for help. He was like, I need him to save my wife. And in that moment, Mace refused to listen to him. He refused to look for his shatter point, and that's why they lost. That's why they lost. And when Obi-Wan goes back, he's like, I defeated Grievous. The war is done. The clones betrayed me. Like, what's going on? He gets the most devastating news he could ever possibly get. And that's your brother and your best friend has killed the Jedi. And <laughs> I am trying to laugh because it's a coping mechanism. I so don't want to say it, but the book fixes so much of the movie. Like in the movie, it all happens quickly. Again, because he had like a four hour cut that he couldn't release, which I hope he did. I really <laughs> wished he did. But it's all longer here. Like Anakin doesn't give in immediately. He doesn't like fall to his knees and is like, yeah, I'll go with you, palps. There's actually like resistance, which is so much worse. I can't. Of course you can. You can. Anakin shook his head and found that the rest of him threatened to begin shaking as well. I, I came to save your life, sir, not to betray my friends. What friends? And do you think that task is finished, my boy? Like it's so much worse. It's so much worse. Do you think killing one traitor will end treason? Do you think the Jedi will ever stop until I am dead? And Anakin's hands are shaking. It's them or me, Anakin. Or perhaps I should put it more plainly. It's them or Padme. It's just, it's not easy, that's all. I have, I've been a Jedi for so long. It's awful, okay? It's awful, it's awful, it's awful, it's awful. I just... <sighs> he gives him, like, a whole speech and actually convinces him, and he's like, it's the Jedi... Or Padme. Pick. Except it's the choice that kills Padme. And I need to stop talking because he, this is just awful. On the mountain peak within himself, he weighed Padme's life against the Jedi Order. It was no contest. I... <sighs> In a way, Obi-Wan hurts me more in this book because his realization that his friend Cody and the clones he's been fighting with for years betray him he still goes with hope he's like let's find Yoda let's find Mace let's find my friends let's find Anakin like he doesn't it doesn't even cross his brain that he could be part of it he's just like we were all betrayed I need to go back to them to my friends to my family like it hurts so much more it hurts so much more Knowing that he didn't expect it. I just watched the episodes, um, the Utapau episodes, where he's like, how would you sleep? Knowing that I was a disappointment. Luckily, that would never happen and never, w luckily, that hasn't happened and it never would. Like, that whole scene, it, it doesn't even cross his mind that Anakin is the cause of the betrayal and that when he comes back, he will want to kill him. And I hate it. I, I hate it so much. <laughs> this. This is what hurts. The banter and how he's like, go ahead, General, we'll be right behind you. Execute Order 66. Just... <laughs> Clone.
Cody was a clone, he would execute the order faithfully without hesitation or regret. The order is given once. Its wave spreads to clone commanders on Kashyyyk, Felucia, and the other planets. In every battle front, every military installment, every hospital and rehab center and spaceport cantina in the galaxy. Except for Coruscant. On Coruscant, Order 66 is already being executed. <laughs> here, Here is where we have to avoid tears. Here it is. The Clone Wars were never an epic struggle. They were never intended to be. What is happening right now is why the Clone Wars were fought in the first place. It is their reason for existence. The Clone Wars have always been, in and of themselves, from the very inception, the revenge of the Sith. They were irresistible bait. They took place in remote locations on planets that belonged primarily to somebody else. They were fought by expendable proxies, and they were constructed as a win-win situation. The Clone Wars were the perfect Jedi trap. By fighting it all, the Jedi lost. With the Jedi Order overextended, spread thin across the galaxy, each Jedi is alone, surrounded only by whatever clone troops he, she, or it commands. War itself pours darkness into the Force, deepening the cloud that limits Jedi perception. And the clones have no malice, no hatred, not the slightest ill intent that might give warning. They are only following orders. In this case, Order 66. Hold out blasters appearing clone hands. Clones open fire, and Jedi die all across the galaxy, all at once. Jedi die. <laughs> See? <laughs> this is it. This is where Matthew Stover's writing comes in clutch. Like, to hell, you don't have to watch me cry, don't worry. But Jesus. <laughs> this is where the strength of writers is pronounced, because in the movie you see it, but here you see it described like here you the words are hammered home to you all across the galaxy jedi die i'm in physical pain when rtd says i don't know anakin doesn't talk to me anymore rtd2 getting dialogue is actually the best thing because he's in everything but she looked stricken, pale and terrified. It made him love her more. He's he's gone. Like he's gone. He's so gone. At this point he's already killed the kids, so it's like just how he now believes that he owns Padme and the child and she's like come back to me, my love, come back to me. He's now down on her. You say that like I'm already gone. I just, I, I wish I was elsewhere, okay? I wish I were elsewhere, anywhere else, <laughs> except here. <sighs> the fact that Boga had shielded Obi-Wan from the blast. The Dragon Mount had known what Obi-Wan had been incapable of even suspecting, and without hesitation she'd given her life to save her rider. I suppose that makes me more than her rider, Obi-Wan thought. I suppose it makes me her friend. It certainly made her mind. He let grief take him for a moment. Grief not for the death of a noble beast, but for how little time Obi-Wan had to appreciate the gift of his friend's service. Assume that anything in the movie that happens is longer in the book. There's more explanation. There's more dialogue. There's like he, Boga in the movie is like barely there. Here he actually mourns her life and she saves him from Order 66. Like anything that happens in the film is expanded on in the book. If you ever like needed a reason to read the novelizations. It's you like that with most of them, but even more so with Revenge of the Sith. Because that movie should have been like four or five hours and the book proves why because if you read the book you have such a different image in your head of the movie like three out of the 50 lines that are in the book are in the movie the death of anakin anakin must have fallen along with mace and agon sassy and kit fallen along with the temple along with the order itself he almost hopes it because if anakin didn't fall with the others this is so much worse than if Anakin had fallen with the others. 
All the dreams, all the promises, all the children. We took them from their homes, Obi-Wan fought to stay in his chair. The pain inside him demanded motion. It became wave after wave of tremors. We promised their families. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. At least it didn't have to see the Jedi die. We need to thank the book for that. Yes, we have a the loss of Anakin stabbed him. Then he let that go, too. I have. He corrected himself. It would have been so much better for him if Anakin had fallen with the others, and that, that alone hurts me beyond words. It's gonna hurt him so much more that Anakin is not dead. <laughs> this is where the brilliance of Padme comes in, because she knows what's going on. She's like, it's the only way. You have to vote for the Empire, and then you have to fight. I mean, she was the beginning of the rebellion that her daughter will later lead don't worry about me she said distantly i don't know i'll live that long padme my queen if i ever hear a stray word against her i'll turn into anakin i will learn who did this learn yoda shook his head sadly no already you do he said and how now anakin's perspective is no longer anakin's perspective it's either the sith lord or darth vader I won't even cry anymore. I'm just, I, I'm weak. I can't. Yoda warns him and tells him, don't, don't look. Looking will only give you pain. And he sees the children and the master is killed. And like, he opened himself to what he was about to see. He was prepared and centered and trusting in the force. And yet, Obi-Wan, staring, wished that he had the strength to rip his eyes out of his head. But even blind, he would see this forever. He would see his friend, his student, his brother, Turn and kneel in front of the black cloaked Lord of the Sith. His hang his head rang with a silent scream. The fact that he was ready, he saw all the carnage, all the death, all his friends, but he thought he was ready to see his friend, his student, his brother be the one who had caused it. I I, I need to I just need to leave and get through this so that we can suffer with me <sighs> he huddled against the console blind with pain warned you were obi-wan said i should have let them shoot me what no that was already too late it was already too late a geonosis the zabrak on naboo i should have died there i should have brought i before i ever brought him here choose this skywalker did obi-wan lowered his head and i'm afraid i might know why and the fact that Yoda says there's two Sith, two Jedi. Obi-Wan nodded, but he still couldn't meet the gaze of the ancient master. I'll take Palpatine. Don't make me kill Anakin, he said. He's like my brother, master. <sighs> Out of this misery, you must put him. <sighs> Reading Anakin's descriptions is just tragedy. Because he, like, reassembles his Anakin face when he goes to see Padme. He looks at everything in terms of control and power. Even talking to Palpatine, which is the true way of the Sith, he's like, you should be careful because I am a disturbance of the Force. He no longer looks at him like his master. He looks at him as something to defeat. Here we go. Last part of the book. Another thing. Um, Stover made him, made Palpatine way more snarky. Than in the movie. In the movie, he's kind of mustached, really. I guess because there's no really time to give him depth. But he's so snarky here. He's like, it wouldn't be Kenobi, would it? Please say it's Kenobi. Lord Vader gets such a thrill from killing people who care for him. <laughs> he's being so snarky. I don't want to laugh. I shouldn't laugh, but... So easily slain, Obi-Wan is not. Neither are you, apparently, but that is about to change. A lightsaber appeared, green as sunlight in a forest. The test of that today will be... Even a fraction of the dark side is more powerful than your Jedi arrogance can conceive. Living in the light, you have never seen the depth of the darkness. He's just so snarky here, and I kind of almost wish that that was also him in the movie. Instead of, like, the mustache whirly villain, he could have been like, Oh, please say it's Obi-Wan, because I would love that. <laughs> in the final stretch, he loves him so much that he still wants him through everything. He still wants him to escape. Obi-Wan looked at the best friend he had ever had. I'll give you a chance, Obi-Wan, for old time's sake. Walk away. 
If only I could. Go someplace out of the way. Retire. Meditate. You don't have to fight for peace anymore. Peace is here. My empire is peace. The fact that he wants him to leave, even through his broken system, he wants him to leave. Obi-Wan looked at the best friend he had ever had. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> it's an expression, obviously it's an expression, but emotionally, I'm there. <laughs> I always wondered, but it was R2-D2. It was R2-D2 who came and dragged Padme away and said, don't worry, you'll be all right. And they drag her to the ship. R2-D2 saved Anakin's life. Hearing R2-D2's dialogue is actually a little painful because it reveals how much he actually loves the Skywalkers. The best lightsaber duel in history described by words is not epic. It's so sad that you could cry for three days because seeing it is one thing with that epic soundtrack, but hearing it, the words that Matthew Stover chooses to describe it with is the worst thing I've ever experienced. And I didn't remember how bad it was. Blade to blade, they were identical. After thousands of hours in lightsaber sparring, they knew each other better than brothers, more intimately than lovers. They were complementary halves of a single warrior. In every exchange, Obi-Wan gave ground. It was his way, and he knew that to strike Anakin down would burn his own heart to ash. Matthew Stover and I will need to have a conversation. <laughs> because the fight with the song is devastating. The words he uses to describe the fight are just gut-wrenching. I'll now say something that's denial for myself in my childhood, but the relationship between Obi-Wan and Anakin is the worst in the movies compared to like the Clone Wars and compared to the books. They just don't have enough time for it. Like they have banter, but there's all of like two scenes in that trilogy where you actually see their closeness, obviously at the end. And I think there's like one scene in, okay, three scenes, two in Revenge of the Sith, one in Attack of the Clones, where you actually see their love for each other. Here, it's gut-wrenching because from the beginning, he describes it. From the beginning, it's like they're brothers, they're one warrior, two sides of the same coin. Like, they're so close that it's insane. Like, even Vader cannot kill Obi-Wan. Like, here it's described in a way that every word that Obi-Wan says towards Anakin is, like, drenched with grief and despair. In the movie... They kind of played it stoically. Like, he doesn't sound that regretful about what he has to do to Anakin. And they don't talk that much during the fight, which changes in the book. You only feel that grief in the end. And the whole speech where he's like, you were my brother, Anakin. I loved you. But here you feel it throughout. The entire fight is just, like, grief. Laden with grief and remorse and despair and sadness. Because every word that he says feels like it hurts Obi-Wan to say. And the weight of it is so much worse. So he, I will actually change my answer and say that this book is essential. Essential if you want to enjoy the prequels and Anakin and Obi-Wan as characters. And Palpatine and the Revenge of the Sith, the movie properly because every scene that feels a bit hollow in the movie is expanded upon so much here's the famous quote and the one that kills kills you this was not Sith against jedi this was not light against dark or good against evil it had nothing to do with duty or philosophy religion or morals it was anakin against obi-wan personally just the two of them and the damage they had done to each other This is awful. This is awful and critically tragic. <sighs> Deflecting force blasts and countering strikes from this creature of rage that had been his best friend, suddenly comprehending an unexpectedly profound truth. The man he faced was everything Obi-Wan had devoted his life to destroying. Murderer, traitor, fallen Jedi, Lord of the Sith. And here and now, despite it all, Obi-Wan still loved him. Yoda had said it flat out. Allow such attachments to pass out of one's life, a Jedi must. But Obi-Wan had never let himself understand. He had argued for Anakin, made excuses, covered for him again and again and again. All the while this attachment he denied even feeling had blinded him to the dark path his best friend walked. Obi-Wan knew there was, in the end, only one answer for attachment. He let it go. Despite it all, he still loved him. I...
it's the pain it's the pain of like it's not a meme but someone made a post about how like every single person that loved vader the last thing they said to him was how much they loved him like you had luke you had obi-wan had may like even r2 probably every single person that loved him loved him until his fall and like <sighs> i'm pain i'm in so much pain let's just be grateful that ahsoka wasn't there <laughs> here it is the decisive moment when anakin is burning Obi-Wan picked up Anakin's lightsaber. He lifted his own as well, weighing them in his hands. Anakin had based his design upon Obi-Wan's. So similar they were. Obi-Wan, he just asks after him, like as he's burning, you were the chosen one. <sighs> you were my brother, Anakin, said Obi-Wan Kenobi. I loved you, but I could not save you. He knew that ship, the Chancellor's shuttle, now he supposed the Emperor's shuttle. Yoda had failed. He might have died. He might have left Obi-Wan alone, the last Jedi. Below his feet, Darth Vader burst into flame. I hate you, he screamed. Obi-Wan looked down. It would be a mercy to kill him. He was not feeling merciful. He was feeling calm and clear, and he knew that to climb down to that black belt beach might cost him more time than he had. Another Sith Lord approached. In the end, there was only one choice. It was a choice he had made many years before when he had passed his trials of Jedi knighthood and sworn himself to the Jedi forever. In the end, he was still Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he was still a Jedi, and he would not murder a helpless man. He would leave it to the will of the Force. He turned and walk walked away. And in the end, they are both who they are meant to be. And he knows that it's pointless for both of them to die because Sidious could kill him and then restore Anakin anyway. He knew, and he became exactly who he was. He would not kill a helpless man, and he just leaped. Just the beauty of this. He began to run because he realized if he was fast enough, there was still one thing he could do for Anakin. He could still do honor to the memory of the man he had loved and to the vanished order they had both served. And he's gonna go and save Padme. Obi-Wan left and never looked back. He's gonna go and save Padme and take care of Anakin's children and <sighs> dedicate his entire life to protecting his son. The fact that in Obi-Wan's training with Qui-Gon, it ends the same way, like as Palpatine is bringing his apprentice back, so does the most powerful Jedi become an apprentice, gaining mastery that Palpatine can never have. <sighs> and I still hold canon true, as most people that palpatine drained the life from padme to fuel it into anakin because the sith can only heal by stealing by thieving others lives and i think it's such a perfect irony that it was his wife's life in the end that actually made him darth vader and he like he palpatine won one it's a win-win situation he got rid of something that could tie anakin back and he gave him life so it's like a double win that's very good and it's never canon but i think a lot of us believe it the fact that both kids were born quiet and solemn padme you have twins that we once said desperately they need you please hang on the fact that he was trying so desperately to save anakin's wife and child i mean his friend too his friend too which i think a lot of people keep forgetting Padme reached across with her free hand and the hand she had laid upon the bra of her firstborn son and pressed something into Obi-Wan's palm. For a moment, her eyes cleared and she knew him. Obi-Wan, there is still good in him. I know there is still. She sagged against the pillow. Half a dozen different scanners buzzed with conflicting alarm noises and the medical droid shooed them from the room. There's only one problem, though, that they're still not learning from their mistakes because how they're like... Foundation of the new Jedi Order they will be. Like, their mother is not even cold in the ground. <laughs> and they're like, we need to take them. They will be our new Jedi. <laughs> we can hide them away, keep them safe, train them as Anakin should have been trained. How are they to learn the self-discipline of a Jedi? How are they to master the skill of the Force? Jedi training, the sole source of self-discipline, is not. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, 
you've got to learn. Okay, you've got to. They almost took Anakin's children and indoctrinated them from birth. <laughs> Thank God they didn't do that because that's definitely not the way. Have you learned shit? The adoption is always a little funny because they're like, I would like to take Leia to Alderaan. She would be a princess. <laughs> they're like, no happier fate could any child ask for. With our blessing and that of the force, let Leia be your child. And they're like, what of the boy? Well, you know, throw him to his cousins on the desert planet. Like, obviously, he will also be loved and protected by Anakin's siblings, but it's just so funny. She will be a princess, and he can be, he can live in a desert. I will cry again, so I'll just read this quickly. A Tatooine, not like Alderaan it is, deep in the Outer Rim, wild and dangerous planet. Anakin survived it, Obi-Wan said. Luke can too, and I can. Well, I could take him there and watch over him, protect him from the worst of the planet's dangers, until he can learn to protect himself. Like a father you wish to be, young Obi-Wan. More an eccentric old uncle, I think. It is a part I can play very well, to keep watch over Anakin's son. Obi-Wan sighed, finally allowing his face to register a suggestion of his old gentle smile. I can't imagine a better way to spend the rest of my life. To keep watch of Anakin's son, I cannot imagine a better way to spend the rest of my life. I'll see you later. <laughs> For me, but... Master Yoda, do you think Padme's twins will be able to defeat Palpatine? Strong the Force runs in the Skywalker line. <laughs> Skywalker line. But he said Padme's twins. It's their allegiance. Yeah, but Skywalker line. But started with Shmi, who we still should not be forgetting because she is a queen and an icon. And the fact that he actually tells them, please trust me that we will never betray the legacy of the Jedi. I will never surrender the Republic to the Sith. Just don't hear of what I do in the Empire. It was Padme's wish, and she was a shrewder political mind than I'll ever be. We must appear to support the Empire. Please trust that we will never betray the Jedi. Damn it. I love this, though, because like he took the droids, so they're Leia's. How lovely. His daughter is the child of Master Anakin and Senator Amidala. I can hardly wait to tell her all about her parents. I'm sure she will be very proud. <laughs> and then he's like, um, maybe, maybe wipe his mind. Yeah, maybe, you know. <laughs> Here, of course, we have the tragic. Only you. You did it. You killed her. You killed her because finally when you could have saved her, when you could have gone away with her, when you could have been thinking about her, you were thinking about yourself. It is in this blazing moment that you finally understand the trap of the dark side, the final cruelty of the Sith, because now yourself is all you will ever have. The shadow is all you have left, because the shadow understands you, the shadow forgives you, the shadow gathers you unto itself, and within your furnace heart you burn in your own flame. This is how it feels to be Anakin Skywalker, forever. Not forever, luckily, because your son will save you, but th that's so far away. I can't even cry anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm spent. I am spent. Reading this after the Clone Wars is physically painful, but I knew that if I didn't get it finished now, I never would. So I hope you appreciate my efforts, you, the two people that care about Star Wars. <laughs> we're done. Much to the physical pain of me, we're done with this book. We're done. We're done with this trilogy. I don't know if I'll read the sequel to this because it's just pain. It's just Vader wake, like Vader waking up and going to wreak havoc and actually going to Alderaan and almost seeing Leia. But the final chapter where Obi Wan on Tatooine actually learns that Vader lived is physically painful. I don't think I can do this to myself anymore. I don't think. I think twice was enough. Twice was enough. Like I, I don't. This is a fantastic book. Beautifully written wonderfully masterful perfect novelization perfect star wars everything it's perfect and i don't want to read it again <laughs> i don't want to read it again because it's physically painful and i don't want to do that to myself again because contrary to popular belief i'm not a masochist i'm really really not i just wanted to finish this and have the trilogy of logs that i started so many years ago but yeah, read it. If you get anything from this video, please read it. 
and then maybe never read it again because it's painful. It's just painful. Read anything else. I might pick up the original trilogy, but we'll see. Right now, I just need a break. <laughs> I need so desperately need a break from this because this was just misery. Beautifully written misery. Matthew Strover, my dude. Jesus Christ. That's all I will say for his writing. So I hope you somewhat enjoyed this video that took me over a year to make because apparently I suck at vlogs. I was meant to have finished ages ago. So I will see you in the next video and let's hope it's not one as miserable as this.